Hey there, welcome back to Declutter Your Life. I'm your host, Andrew Mellon, and today we're going to talk about where to start. I know that for so many of us, it is the number one question on everybody's mind, and it's the confusing thing of you're feeling the sense of overwhelm, you're stressed and confused and don't know where to start. So let's take that on. And when people ask me this question when I'm teaching and speaking and doing all that other stuff, my typical answer is you've got one of two places to start. If you're feeling strong, fierce, on fire, I say go for a big win. And if you're feeling a little puny and beat up, I say go for a quick win. Either way, you're going to get to the same place. So you don't have to worry about uh, how that's going to impact your ultimate success. It's really just strong, big win, a little weak, go for a quick win. And the way to begin, let's back up for just a second. And let me say, failure breeds failure, success breeds success. So if the last time you tried to get organized, you were not successful and understand that so many of us focus on getting organized when we really should be focused on staying organized. So that's part of it, right? Is that if you were not successful in staying organized, you might be thinking, oh, I don't know how to get organized. Chances are you have gotten organized a million times before. So we're gonna use the organizational triangle, one home for everything, like with like to get organized. We're gonna use the third leg of the triangle, something in, something out to stay organized. Now, one home for everything means everything has one home and only one home. We're not gonna debate that. Now, where you keep your keys can be different from where I keep my keys, but your keys have a home and my keys have a home. They can only ever be one of two places, in its home or in our hand unlocking something. It cures so much of the disorganization just by applying that rule and its sister, like with like, which means all like objects live together. Not most of them, but all of them. So instead of keeping most of the tools in the toolbox, maybe in the garage or in a closet, and then keeping the Phillips head screwdriver in the junk drawer in your kitchen, because you've got a story that says, oh, you know, the knobs on these cabinets are always a little loose. I don't wanna go all the way to the toolbox to get that screwdriver. This is actually a time management hack. It might be one of the things you're telling yourself to justify your choice. I'm just going to keep this Phillips head screwdriver in this drawer so that when the knobs are loose, I can just get the screwdriver. The problem with that is you never remember your secret little time management hack. So you naturally go to the toolbox looking for the screwdriver, can't find it. You might even end up at the hardware store picking up another one. And then maybe three or four weeks later, as you're digging around in that junk drawer, moving the Ikea hardware out of the way and the pizza delivery menus and the bread twist ties that you come across the screwdriver and you're like oh my god who put this who's the bozo that put this screwdriver here and then of course you remember oh i'm the bozo who did this i thought this was clever then you think oh now that i've had this moment of of uh, clarity i will never forget that the screwdriver is here but the truth is in 30 seconds you will have forgotten it it's why like with like is so essential that between one home for everything and like with like we get organized done that's those are the only two rules you need to know to get organized the third leg of the triangle, something in, something out, we'll talk about in a future episode. Just for now, understand that once you achieve stuff equilibrium, once you have enough of everything that serves you, nothing that doesn't, everything is in its home and all like objects are together, you can stay organized. Just when something comes in, something goes out. We're no longer in that business of accumulating things, even if it's so free, they were practically giving it away, right? Or there's a BOGO, a buy one, get one free offer. It's not a bargain if you don't need it. So don't bring it home because you're just going to have to find a home for it. And if everything already has a home, all of the like objects are together, you're either going to displace something and make it homeless, or you're going to try to shove something in where it doesn't belong. So not to mention the fact that if you have ever said, oh my God, there's not enough 
hours in the day for me to do everything that I want to do. My question to you completely without snark and with deep affection and compassion is if you don't have enough time already for the things that really matter to you, why, why would you spend any of your precious time accumulating things that you don't need, regardless of how cheap, even if they're free, you don't need it. You have enough of everything that serves you. So just stay focused on the big things that matter to you, your relationships, your work, your family, the adventures and experiences that are, have always been someday or later experiences for you. The more we practice these principles and get you organized and keep you organized, the more time opens up in your life, more time for, for love, for money, for freedom to make the choices instead of being held hostage by stuff, you're back in the driver's seat of your life. I just think that that sounds so much better then flipping through catalogs or walking through the shopping mall, picking up stuff, or you know, even going to tag sales or uh, the dollar store. If you don't need it, don't bring it home. So all of that is the context for us looking at quick win, big win. It, again, if you're feeling strong, go to the place where the stuff is the most compacted. Maybe that sad, scary corner in your basement that you've been avoiding or, or the crazy closet that you just keep opening it up and shoving stuff into it and then slamming the door and running away, hoping that everything doesn't fall on your head the next time you open it. Go to that place because you're going to get the biggest win once you start to break it apart. Now, something else to remember when you go into any of those spaces is it will get bigger before it gets better. You just have to remember that. I like to say often, forewarned is forearmed. So you shouldn't be surprised. It, even though it all it, it's a crazy jumble of stuff and you've shoved it in there, when you start to break it apart, it's going to seem like it morphs, right? It's like that closet on um, uh, it's uh, the the locker in the the bank uh, that belonged to Bellatrix um, uh, in the Harry Potter stories, right? You know when they're looking for the Horcrux and they're in there, and Harry touches something and it triples and it keeps expanding and making more and more of itself. It feels like that to you when you open this closet, but in fact, it isn't happening. It is the exact same number of objects. It's just that when you pull them apart and spread them out so that you can figure out what stays and what goes, it feels like it morphs into something bigger, but it really, it hasn't. It's the same exact amount of stuff. So just remember that we've had this conversation when you experience that so that it doesn't feel quite so overwhelming. So big win, that's where I would send you. Quick win is just just scan the surfaces in your home. In uh, What can easily leave? Is there junk mail? Is there food containers that could go in the recycle bin? Uh, can you load the dishwasher? What's laying around that isn't in its home that could go into its home? And that's a quick, easy way to build some momentum. And from there, as I said, right, failure breeds failure, success breeds success. It'll be that much easier for you to dig in and build on that momentum so that once you deal with the surfaces, then you can go to the junk drawer in the kitchen. Then from there, you can go maybe into the utility closet or the laundry closet. You don't have to go someplace where there's likely to be a lot of feelings, like maybe a clothes closet or the kitchen pantry, right? Or the basement or the attic or even the garage. You want to work your, your way through the places where you're least likely to be snagged by anything that would have an emotional uh, sticker on it. And just deal with that stuff first. And the more you build momentum and you build that sense memory and that muscle memory, the easier it'll be when you get to and when really when we get to those other areas. So in upcoming episodes, we're going to talk about clothes and closets. We're going to talk about the kitchen and the pantry. We're going to talk about basements, attics, garages. We're going to talk about offsite storage. Uh, your bedroom, your bathroom, your entryway, all of these things, uh, your home office, papers, filing, your uh, electronics, digital files, we're going to address all of those. But for now, right, let's just get you in motion and winning so that you not only feel empowered, but you want more. That's, that's the magic spark that keeps you moving. And I've seen this over and over again with clients and students where 
uh, they are perhaps a little tender, a little timid, a little um, uh, tentative. And once they get a taste of it, so once you get a taste of it, you'll start to see, oh, I want more of this feeling. And the liberation, it doesn't take a lot of activity for you to really feel that sense of freedom. And that breeds and feeds on itself as well. So it's super exciting what's just ahead of you. And I can't wait to, to be with you next week when we climb into more of this and uh, start to address some of those major clutter hotspots. For now, quick win, fast win, uh, or big win. Depending on what you're feeling, go for one of the two of them and uh, let me know. Share with us on uh, Facebook, on Twitter, Instagram, Pinterest. Uh, let us know how you're making your progress and be sure to like the podcast. Uh, it helps us to reach more people, the, the more people who are cheering us on, uh, then we can cheer on more people as well. So uh, thanks for tuning in, and I'll look forward to being with you again very soon. Join us again right here. Bye.